Good evening, Mr. Hunt. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. mission in Mission Impossible is to recover three plutonium cores before they can fall into the hands of a terrorist known only as John Lark. Kill them. For all the MI fans, it really is a culmination of every film. The end you always feared is coming. Every mission has led to this one. The fallout of all your good intentions. The book, The Odyssey, was chosen for a very specific reason. The journey that Ethan Hunt and his team go through, it is an odyssey and definitely reflective of that story. It's an epic tale, it's a personal tale, and there's incredibly huge stakes. Ethan has walked into a situation beyond his control, and as hard as he tries to control that environment, he has to go through this story even though he knows he's being manipulated. At the very beginning of this project, I went to Tom and said, if you could only do one thing in this movie, what would it be? He said, I want to tie up the story of Ethan and Julia. That made me really excited because the love story felt unresolved. We wanted to bring that back, that emotional journey of his past that's going to now come to the forefront. I'm so sorry, Jimmy. I'm so sorry. One of the very interesting things in Mission Impossible is the team of actors. Doesn't everybody want to be a part of the IMF? It's the impossible mission for us. Ethan, the countdown has started. We have 15 minutes. I work with people that I admire, people that I respect, and I love these actors and I love these characters. The IMF team in this movie is comprised of Ethan Hunt, Benji Dunn, played by Simon Pegg, Luther Stickle, played by Ng Rames, and Ilse Faust, played by Rebecca Ferguson. Bringing the team together is a real challenge. The story seems to scatter them. It's very rare where you find moments where you have the whole team together right before the car chase kicks off. They all end up in a cart. We were hurtling around Paris. I'm in the back with Ving and Henry, both of whom are large men. Was the little car your idea? At one point, Henry decided he didn't want to ride back in the car because it was quite cramped. So he, he said, I'll, I'll run up there. And we just drove the car next to him running, and I sang the Superman tune out the window. <laughs> Henry Cavill, who plays Walker in the film, is something of a wild card in our story. He's the director of the CIA's number one assassin. He goes and takes out people who you can't capture. I just thought, this guy is really talented. And he came to this film, and he really brought it. Angela Bassett, who plays Erica Sloan, the new director of the CIA. She's ruthless, hard-charging. You just go, this woman is powerful. She just exudes intelligence, power, credibility. And that character that Q wrote for her, I just, I love it. I had an absolutely fantastic time working with her. She really brings something special to the movie. Alec Baldwin, who plays Alan Hunley, the now secretary of the IMF, was a character we loved working with on the last movie, and we absolutely had to have him come back this time. I really admire him to have McCory write those scenes that we get to act together in such a large film, but also very personal moments. I'm sorry, sir. Vanessa Kirby plays the White Widow. Thank you for coming. She appears to be this woman who runs a charity and is a philanthropist, and in reality, she's an arms dealer. The White Widow is somebody who comes into Ethan's life as a sort of total antithesis of all the people that he's met so far. The language of Mission Impossible is all about practical stunts, practical action, going to real locations. This Mission Impossible takes us to London, Paris, New Zealand, Norway, and the skies over Abu Dhabi. The scope of the film is enormous, and I think the story wants that. I was determined to have multiple stunts and have all of those stunts be, in some way or another, uniquely challenging. Physical things are always more effective. You feel the weight and the proximity and the speed and the danger that's involved. You can tell when something's been cheated. And the one thing that Tom definitely does not want to do is cheat an audience. Tom is actually hanging off that helicopter. It's when he dropped to the cargo bag. He did that. I know he did it because I watched him. It's all to maximize the fact that the character that you are with is doing all of these things, and it really puts you in the center of the action. 
We are crashing and driving trucks, cars, motorbikes. We're skydiving, we're helicopter flying, we're falling, we're fighting. We are running on rooftops. The rooftop chase in London was originally going to be a small bit of action that joined two acts together. It grew in size and it grew in complexity. I'm going to run as fast as I can. I'm actually going to try to make it to the other side. First two takes, I went in quite hard, and it knocks the wind out of you. But it looked cool, so I was like, all right. He really wanted to stretch it out and make it look great. <laughs> put my foot out literally for a split second to try to soften the impact just a hair. It put pressure on his foot and snapped it. I looked down. He knew he had broken his ankle. I crawled over the wall just to get past camera because I knew this is the take. First thing he did was turn to the camera operator and say, did you get that? The shot of Tom breaking his ankle actually made it into the film. Tom, being such an athlete, is aware of what it takes to do what he's about to do. Tell me what I could climb, guys. People think that he's reckless, and he's not. He's incredibly safety conscious. Nothing would ever happen on set if he wasn't 100% sure that it was safe and doable. Tom is never just flying a helicopter or riding a bike or driving a car. He's giving performance as Ethan Hunt. To be able to give character whilst doing it at that level is what separates him. Action, Tom. This film is shot on both film and digital. I'm a huge lover of film and do everything I can to preserve it. At the same time, I'm not an absolutist. There were certain sequences where film just wouldn't have been practical. And we've also had the benefit of shooting IMAX format. And shooting in the large screen format like that has you rethinking the way you frame shots and the way that you present action. There are two IMAX sequences in this film, the helicopter chase and the halo sequence. I wanted the audience to have the biggest experience they possibly could. It was just really important to me that you saw it in all of its vivid reality. We want to look at things and see how, in every way, can we create a movie that is elegant, that is entertaining, Frick. that is gripping, and use all of our skills as filmmakers. And it challenges every department. This has been a really long shoot. We will have been in principal photography for 12 months. Mission Impossible films, they're not easy to make. And I tell everyone when we start out, it's something that we're discovering the story as we go along. It's been a real journey. And what I like the most about this is that despite the long hours and the hard work, everyone has kept a wonderful personality about it. The energy and the work ethic is all positive. It's such hard work, but there's an exhilaration also. And the fact that Tom is also the producer of the franchise, he comes to it with a global understanding, not just of filmmaking, but of what makes Mission Impossible Mission Impossible. This franchise is his baby, and whatever he does in front of the camera or behind the camera, he takes very seriously. He's completely dedicated. For me as an actor, he knows my strengths and weaknesses. Don't you do it, Ethan. Not for me. I learned so much. Just seeing how he runs a set and how how, how much he asks of people in a really wonderful way. Nice job, guys. Thank you all. One of the signature elements of the Mission Impossible franchise is that there is a different director for every single movie. That's good right there. Tilt down just a little bit. And when Tom asked me to come back and direct this one, I said, I'll do it on the condition that I can maintain that aesthetic. It has to feel like a different movie. It can't feel like a continuation of the last film. That involved an almost universal rethinking of my key crew. What was essential to that was the cinematographer. In terms of the look of the film, it's 180 degrees different from the last movie. The visual style is different. It still has his old sensibility of storytelling. He really is just enormously talented. Not only is he a great filmmaker, he's a great writer. He is such an accomplished writer, has such a clear understanding of storytelling and structure. I didn't expect it to be as free and spontaneous when you just go down the river and you've got to let go. He must be exhausted by the end of the shoot because he's been directing and writing throughout the entire thing. Tom and McHugh are a great team. Tom is a force of nature, and you have to be able to stay level with him in order to kind of absorb his creativity. And I think McHugh totally has that. We share the same sensibility in storytelling and style. I just really have such admiration. We figured out recently that we've worked on nine films together in 10 years. There's a really great sense of trust. They are both working towards the same goal, which is a great story. And there's no ego involved. It's a lesson in how to make movies.
The Mission Impossible franchise is as popular as it is because it never forgets the audience. To be able to make these films all over the world is something that is a real privilege, and that's why I just give it everything I have. Tom is first and foremost an entertainer, and everything that he's doing in the movie is not just to be able to say, I did that. It's to show you things that you've never seen. It's to put you in that experience right there with him. It's another great installment in what has become a really beloved, long-running story. Ultimately, it's a story about people. It's very human. After five Mission Impossible movies, Three. it's safe to say this one outdoes them all. Two. I think we just pulled out all the stops. One. It's just a beautiful movie.